You're listening to Rabbi Arya Wolby, Director of Torch, the Torah Outreach Resource Center of Houston. This is the Jewish Inspiration Podcast. All right, good morning, everybody. Welcome back. Welcome back to another installment on Jewish Pride. So since the events, the tragic events of October 7th in our homeland, in Israel, many people have been talking, there have been reverberations of people talking about their Jewish pride. Now is the time to feel proud. Now is the time to stand up and feel passionate for being Jewish and being supportive of Israel, etc., etc. So we've embarked on a series discussing reasons to be proud. What are the reasons to be proud? We discussed already four different ideas, and I want to share with you today the fifth idea, and that is that we are chosen. Now, for many people over the years have told me that they feel uncomfortable with that. That means that we're exclusionists. That means that other people are not chosen, perhaps. So uh, just to, to clarify things, let's understand what it means to be chosen. When God was about to give the Torah to whatever nation was going to accept it, it was offered We know that not only the Jewish people had a great prophet in Moses, but every single nation had a prophet. Every single nation had a powerful prophet. In fact, the sages teach us about Bilaam, that he was such a great prophet that he had greater abilities than Moshe. And he was not a Jewish prophet. He had greater abilities than Moshe. But we know that he didn't bring those abilities to the fore. He didn't maximize that potential. So what happened? All the nations of the world, all of the prophets got a memo. Imagine they open up their inbox and they get a memo from God. Uh Uh-oh, what does God want? God says, here's a free offer. Everyone's like, oh, you don't get anything for free. Right? Don't never trust any, anybody who says something's for free, it's going to cost. Okay? Just know that. It's, that's the rule in life. All right? My parents always told, always told me that you never get anything for free. So God says, guess what? Nations of the world, I'm offering my Torah for free. Who wants it? First come, first serve. And everyone, all of the prophets open up their inbox and they're like, oh, that's interesting. What's in it? I'm not going to just take something for free. I don't want to fall into that trap. What's in it? So everyone sends back the memo to God, email, God, thank you very much for the offer, but before we commit to anything, we want to know what's in it. And Hashem responds to the French, well, that shall not perform adultery. And they're like, no, that's not for us. We we need to have that uh, ability. We can't commit ourselves to that. And to the Germans, uh, thou, thou, thou shall not murder. And to the Arabs, thou shalt not steal, et cetera, et cetera. To each one of the nations, God responds to them duly uh, to what to what their challenge is. And one nation, a very small nation, a nation that has suffered greatly over the years, responds to God and says, Na'asev nishma, we will do and we will listen. And God says, that's my people. That's my people. They're not asking questions. By the way, that's the only time we didn't ask questions. Every time after that, Jews ask a million questions. Right? We ask questions about everything. And in fact, one of the Jewish pride aspects that we discussed previously was that Jewish people ask questions about everything because we want the truth and we want to verify the truth. We don't just accept things because someone said it. Because an authority said it, we're going to verify and we're going to ask questions till we're satisfied that the answer is based in truth and that it's factually honest. So what happens? The Jewish people don't ask, you know, the joke goes that the Jewish people asked, how much is it? And God said, it's free. They'll say, oh, we'll take, we'll take it all. Right. Uh, you know, you know, the, 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 why do Jews have long noses? Because ear is free, right? So, but the truth is like this, is that beyond all of those kidding around and jokes, 
it's a tremendous responsibility to be the chosen people because along with being the chosen people comes the wrath of the nations, the nations who say, oh, we should have been the recipients. We had it. We wanted it. We really meant to. Just another side note, and we'll get to this in a second, about that all the other nations had the opportunity and they and they blew that opportunity. I, I compare it to, you know, if, if we were to pass, I've given this example before, but if we were to give a lottery ticket to somebody here, oh, it's your birthday, Gary, uh, would you like, uh, you know, this uh, gift we bought for you? We give you the lottery ticket for $258 million. And he's like, you know, I, I appreciate it so much. Such, such a kind gesture, but the like tr- likelihood of me winning is nil. It'll take 10 of them right, for free, right? So, and he passes it on around the room and everybody's like, thank you very much. It feels good to have the lottery ticket, but it's meaningless because no one's going to win anyway. And then the last guy holding the ticket actually wins. What's everyone going to feel? It's really my ticket. I really didn't mean it. You should split it amongst us. You should. Everyone is going to have anger. Everyone is going to have jealousy. Everyone is going to have disliking that someone else won. They could have held on to it and won it. Imagine the Jewish people are the ones, the victors, who hold on to that winning ticket, which is the Torah. And all the nations, of course, are going to hate us. So why are there so many non-Jews who want to convert? They don't hate us. There are many non-Jews, many Gentiles who love the Jewish people. So where, where, where do they come in? Because in this week's Parsha, as we're going to see soon in our Parsha focus, we see that the laws of nature stand that Esav Sona es Yaakov that the Gentiles hate the Jews. That's the reality. So why there are so many people who want to convert? In fact, I heard this from from one of the leading rabbis in the world of conversion, where people are converting, non-Jews are coming to convert, that since October 7th, the numbers have not doubled, have not tripled, have not quadrupled, but rather tenfold where non-Jews are coming in droves to convert. But but one second, where where are these converts coming from? So the Midrash says a very beautiful thing. I think we mentioned this on Friday, but I think it's worth it for us to review it here. And that is that when God offered the nations of the world who wants to receive the Torah, many people said, I do but they were overtaken by the majority. So imagine that Frenchie uh, who says, no, no, I do want to take the Torah, but they're like, yeah, it's 97 to 3, the 3% that want to receive the Torah, sorry, you've been outvoted. And what about some of those Jews who said, nah, we don't want the headache of, you know, the pogroms and the expulsions and the Jew burning and the book burnings and the Holocaust, we we don't want all of that. And they said, no, 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 we don't want to receive the Torah. The Midrash says that those who wanted to join from the nations but were outvoted are going to be the future converts of the Jewish people. And those among the Jewish people who said, we don't want to receive the Torah, those are going to be the Jews who leave Judaism and go astray. So we have to understand that there is a tremendous privilege. There is a tremendous privilege in being among the chosen people. Chosen, asher bochar bonu, God chose us and we chose God. It's like, you know, a guy gets on his knees, on his knee, and proposes marriage to his beloved. So who chooses who? Well, they choose each other. He needs to choose her and she needs to choose him. We choose Hashem and Hashem chose us. But you know what we celebrate? That Hashem chose us. Asher bochar bonu mikolo amim. God chose us. We say this every single morning. We say this before we learn Torah. Asher bochar bonu mikolo amim. God chose us among all the other nations of the world. Hashem could have chosen all the other 70 nations. Hashem chose us. And what did we do in return? We chose Hashem. 
and we should have said, Hashem, we're committing just like a husband and a wife commit to one another. So too, Hashem, we, the Jewish people, are committing ourselves to you just as you have committed yourselves, yourself to us. This is the most incredible relationship that the entire world is trying to mimic. Does that mean that someone who's not Jewish can't connect with God? That's not true. Every single human being can connect with God. In fact, the non-Jews have a shortcut. It's called the seven Noahide laws. And the seven Noahide laws are commanded upon every single human being on planet Earth. And those seven ways are channels through which they can connect with the Almighty. The Jewish people, we have 613 different channels. Now, some people can refer to those 613, like some of my students in the past have said, well, Rabbi, this is a little bit excessive, 613 problems we have. God forbid, it's a misunderstanding of what the purpose of the Torah is. The purpose of the Torah is to be used as a tool, as a mechanism of connection with the Almighty. And every single mitzvah that we perform is a tool in us connecting with the Almighty. It's a method, A we, we used this example before, of it being a souvenir. When you travel, you go someplace, you come back with a souvenir, something, a token of, of, of a memorabilia. Why? So that when you get back home, you get back to Houston, you get back to Kingwood, what's going to happen? You're going to be like, oh, I remember I have a picture Right? You remember when we went to Jerusalem, we have this picture by the Western Wall. Wow, you remember who we met there? We saw this person and that person, and it re- you recall the whole experience. That's what memorabilia is for. We were standing at the foot of Mount Sinai, the most incredible revelation ever in the history of the world. And we say, what? Well, we're going to be in 3,300 years, we're going to be out in Houston, Texas. And we're be like, how in the world are we going to recall this event? How are we going to be able to relive this experience? Hashem says, you know what? I'm going to give you the mitzvah of mezuzah. I'm going to give you the mitzvah of Shabbos. Um, By the way, when we recite Kiddush on Shabbos over a glass of wine, you know what we say? We recall the exodus from Egypt, which was the beginning of the revelation at Mount Sinai. So there's almost no mitzvah that one can perform that doesn't bring us back explicitly to that experience at Mount Sinai. We say the Shema, we recite it thrice daily. Three times, morning, evening, and at bedtime. What do we say? Remember the exodus from Egypt. We saw Hashem's outstretched arm. We saw how all the miracles were revealed. Miracles are usually hidden. They were revealed. We saw how God split the sea. We saw how God cleared the path for us. And we were able to arrive at Mount Sinai and receive the Torah. And the revelation was a revelation that the entire world witnessed. Not only us. They saw it happening. In fact, no nation denies the revelation at Mount Sinai. Yes, in the Quran, it's written about the revelation that God had to the Jewish people at Mount Sinai. And in the Christian Bible as well. And in all the other texts of Buddha and everything, everybody agrees that the Jewish people are the chosen people. So what's the whole fight? Whether or not the Jewish people lost their right and Muhammad says he had a dream and the dream God came to him and told him that now he's the prophet, not Moses anymore, and therefore you should follow Islam. And if you don't, you don't, you don't think that that's true, we'll kill you. And the same with the other religions. You have to convert to their religion in order for you to live. Except in Judaism. Someone comes to convert, what do we say? No, we don't think it's such a good idea, you know. Why would you want such a thing, such a headache, so many commandments? Maybe just do the seven Noahide laws is a shortcut. You don't need to do all 613. You don't have to be Jewish to get a place in the world to come. 
It's all true. But someone who has a burning passion and desire says, no, 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 I don't only want seven. It's like imagine in your relationship, you only have seven ways of expressing your love to your spouse. You say, no, 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 I love my spouse so much. I want every way of expression. Not only seven ways. I want to be able to express my love not only with a card and with a little gift and with uh, flowers. That's not the only way I want to express my love. I want to express my love in 613 different ways. That's the Jewish people's being chosen. That's what it means, that we have a, a, a method. We have a way in which we can connect to God that nobody else in the world has. Everyone is welcome to, but they're not obligated to those ways. They don't have the privilege of utilizing their relationship with God and connecting on that level. So my dear friends, Jewish pride number five is Hashem chose us and we chose Hashem. And we're not backing off of it. And we're not going to let ourselves let things fall through the cracks. No, no, no. We want this relationship with God. We embrace this relationship with God. And you know what? Some of us grew up with more religious upbringing. Some of us grew up with a little bit less religious upbringing. Some grew up with Shabbos observance. Some grew up without Shabbos observance. Everyone is not meant to be at the same level. God didn't start us off at the same level, and God doesn't want us to finish at the same level. God wants us each to take our own step. Let's not shy away from taking our own step. We're proud to be Jewish. We're proud of our relationship with God. Let's take a meaningful step to nurture this relationship further. My dear friends, feel proud. Be proud and share that joy with everyone else that you meet. The people around us are looking at us to see our joy, to see our privilege, not to be superior. On the contrary, we're more obligated. We're more obligated because of it. Not to feel high and mighty, oh, look at me, I'm from the chosen people. No, 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 that's arrogance. That's forbidden. On the contrary, we have to sit and learn more and we have to practice more and we have to do more because we are the chosen people. And I will tell you one secret. Of all of those 613 weapons that we have to bring the relationship with God to the greatest level possible, the number one tool is the study of Torah. More than prayer, more than any mitzvah you can perform, the study of Torah, someone who's committed to the study of Torah, because what you do is when you learn Torah, is you don't only immerse your mind, you're learning the language of God. You're learning what God is channeling down to this world, God's language. There's nothing more, because that changes everything. That brings us closer, that gets us more, gets our mind more connected, gets our heart and soul more connected, and hopefully also gets our body more connected with the Almighty. My dear friends, be proud, be Jewish, and don't shy away from a single thing. Don't let anything, you know, bring fear into your life. Because Hashem li lo ira. When I know my relationship with God, I have nothing to fear whatsoever. Hashem should bless us all with unbelievable success in all of our endeavors. Amen. You've been listening to the Jewish Inspiration Podcast, a Torch production. Become a supporter at torchweb.org because your assistance enables more Torah learning around the globe. To find more lessons offered by Torch, please visit torchpodcast.com.